checked in. It's the Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls like you and me. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Made him perfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the Raggy Dolls and say I just don't care. Cause Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Are happy just to be. Raggy Dolls. I'm so happy, sighed Princess, snuggling down into a comfortable cushion on the sofa in Mr. Grimes' living room. At last, we've all got a proper home. Oh, yes, agreed Lucy. It's so nice and warm and cosy here in the cottage. I couldn't agree more, said Soutsack. This is definitely the life. The Raggy Dolls were all feeling very pleased. Today was an extra special day, a double cause for celebration. Mr. Grimes was marrying his childhood sweetheart, Cynthia Popplethwaite, and the Raggy Dolls had been brought to live in the cottage. Here's to the new Mrs. Grimes, said Back to Front. If it wasn't for her, we'd still be living in the reject bin. And here's to living in the cottage, added Princess. May each day be as happy as this one. Have some more lemonade said Rupert the Roo, bounding in from the kitchen with a new bottle. Lemonade fizzed all over the place. Sacre bleu! exclaimed Claude from beneath a soaking wet berry. Struth! Sorry, sport, said Rupert. I'll get some kitchen roll. Never mind, said Lucy. We'll soon have everything mopped up. No one will know. The raggy dolls and Rupert began tidying up. But Dotty was thoughtful. I don't really know how to say this, she said. But maybe moving into the cottage isn't such a good idea after all. What do you mean? said Sadtag. Well, if we live in the cottage, will we still be free to come and go as we please? I mean, now that Mr and Mrs Grimes know about us, we'll have to make sure they find us and everything else exactly where they put us. Oh no, said Lucy. I see what you mean. A stunned silence fell. At last, Sadsack got to his feet and sighed a deep sigh. Oh, well, it was nice while it lasted. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? demanded Claude. Where are you going? Back to the reject bin, said Sadsack glumly. But you can't do that, said Back to Front. That's the whole point. None of us can. Mrs Grimes will notice if any of us are missing. This is awful, sobbed Princess. We'll never have any exciting adventures ever again. Maybe it won't be so bad, said old Edward kindly. The new Mrs Grimes has got a job of her own, remember, and she travels a great deal. Yeah, that's right, said Rupert. And besides, for the next two weeks, you've got no worries. As soon as the wedding's over, they'll be off on honeymoon. Good thinking, said Dotty, cheering up. That should give us plenty of time to work out a plan. Come on, let's finish tidying up. But no sooner had she spoken than they heard a car pull up outside. <gasps> it's them, said Lucy, all of a dither. What are we going to do? Everything's still in a mess. The raggy dolls froze as the door burst open and there stood Mr Grimes carrying Mrs Grimes in his arms. Oh, do be careful, Ozzy. You might put your back out. <sighs> I've got to carry over the threshold, puffed Mr Grimes. It's tradition. Mr. Grimes staggered forward and Mrs. Grimes squealed. Ah, you're going to drop me! No, I'm not, said Mr. Grimes, gently lowering her to the ground. Oh, thank you, my dear husband, said Mrs. Grimes, kissing him lightly on the cheek. Come on, we must get changed and finish the packing. The taxi's due in half an hour. They didn't even notice the mess, whispered back to front. Come on, said Dotty. We must tidy up before one of them comes back. By the time Mr. Grimes appeared with a big suitcase, Everything was back in place, with no sign of soggy kitchen roll anywhere. The Raggy Dolls watched as he put the suitcase on the sofa and went back upstairs. Then Mrs Grimes came down and opened the suitcase to put in a soap bag. Suddenly, she noticed the Raggy Dolls. Ah, my little Raggy Dolls, she said. I can't leave you here all alone, can I? Wouldn't you like to come on honeymoon too? And before they knew it, the Raggy Dolls were packed into the big suitcase and Mrs Grimes had gone back upstairs. What are we going to do? wailed Lucy. We can't go with them. 
It'll be worse than staying in the cottage. We'll have to keep still all the time. Shh, said Dotty. Someone's coming. It was Mr Grimes, carrying a gift-wrapped parcel. He was none too pleased to see the raggy dolls in the suitcase. Oh, no, he thought. What does she want to take this lot for? He quickly removed the raggy dolls, put the parcel in their place, and hid them behind a cushion. Just then, the doorbell rang. Mr. Grimes went to answer it. It was the taxi driver. Quick, hissed Hi-Fi. Everybody b -b -b back in the suitcase. What? exclaimed Dotty. D -d 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 Don't argue, stuttered Hi-Fi. Trust me. While Mr. Grimes asked the taxi driver to wait for two minutes, the raggy dolls scrambled back into the suitcase. Old Edward and Rupert the Roo watched as Mr. Grimes carried the suitcase out to the taxi. He was soon joined by Mrs. Grimes, the front door closed, and the taxi drove off. Now, why do you suppose they went and did that? said Rupert. I thought they wanted to work out a plan. I don't know, sighed old Edward. I really don't know. Meanwhile, the Raggy Dolls wanted to know what Hi-Fi was up to, but he wouldn't say. D -d 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 Trust me, he winked. He's gone mad, thought Sad Sam. Soon, the Raggy Dolls felt themselves being loaded onto a train. Lifted high by a crane onto a big ship, pushed along on a trolley, and then being dumped into Mr. and Mrs. Grimes' cabin. At last, the Raggy Dolls heard Mr. and Mrs. Grimes come in. Oh, Ozzy, this really is going to be a luxury cruise. She was interrupted by a knock at the door. It was a steward with some champagne and smoked salmon on a trolley. Ah, thank you. <laughs> splendid, splendid, said Mr. Grimes, giving the steward a small tip. The Raggy Dolls kept very still beneath the clothes in the suitcase as Mr. Grimes removed the present. I've got a surprise for you, my dearest, he said. No, 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 now, hissed Hi-Fi. And while Mrs. Grimes unwrapped the present, the Raggy Dolls scrambled out of the suitcase and hid under the tablecloth on the champagne trolley. Oh, Ozzy, it's a video camera. Uh, yes, <laughs> do you like it? Of course I do. Here, let me take a video of you. Oh, no, 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 no. It's for recording all the sights, not for my ugly mug. You haven't got an ugly mug. You've got a very nice face. The Raggy Dolls listened as Mrs. Grimes gave him a kiss. Hi-Fi is completely mad, thought Sadsack. I can't stand two weeks of this. I know, said Mrs. Grimes suddenly. Let's take a video of those sweet little dolls. We ought to test the camera, don't you think? I, uh, I'm afraid I left them behind, said Mr. Grimes. I had to take them out of the case to make room for the video. They're still at home, safe and sound. You're not too disappointed, are you? Hi-Fi winked at the others as they began to understand. Of course not, silly, said Mrs. Grimes. Anyway, I suppose a honeymoon is no place for little dolls. Later, up on deck, beneath a starry sky, and sitting under a warm blanket on a big deck chair, the raggy dolls wholeheartedly agreed. But her luxury cruise is quite another matter, declared Princess grandly. No one knows we're here, chuckled back to front. And it's all thanks to Hi-Fi and his quick thinking, added Dotty. It was only a g-g-g-g-guess, stammered Hi-Fi, modestly. But a very good one, n'est-ce pas, said Claude. Quite right, said Dotty. I think we're about to have some jolly exciting adventures, don't you? And everyone agreed. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made in perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls, are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls.